Hi, I'm Minda Tracy from my online training hub. In this video series, I'm going to get you up and running using Excel. Along the way, I'll be sharing tips and tricks that often take years to discover. In this first lesson, we're going to look at the Excel interface so you know where to find things and some terminology that you need to know when working with Excel. Let's get started. If you're familiar with Excel, then you won't see many changes in the Excel 2019 interface. For the most part, it's styling. I'm using Office 365, so my styling may be slightly different to what you see, with some changes to the tab colors. The Excel window is broken into five sections. At the top, we've got the header, then the ribbon, the formula bar, the worksheet, and the status bar. The header houses the quick access toolbar, where you can store your favorite icons. Then we have the file name and then the search box. In earlier versions of Excel, the search box was called tell me what you want to do. Over on the right, you can see I'm logged in. And on the very left, you can see my file is set to auto save. This is only available for Office 365 users and you can toggle auto save on and off by clicking the button here. Below the header is the share button and this is available for Office 365 users. Then we have the comments button, which we'll cover in another lesson, and the feedback icon smiley face. This gives you options for providing positive feedback, negative feedback, and if you have any suggestions. If you provide negative feedback, for example, if Excel crashes, then you should click this immediately after Excel restarts and include a screenshot and attach your logs. Even if the screenshot won't reveal anything useful, feedback that includes screenshots gets priority by the Excel team and so it's more likely to be seen. Back on the header, we've got the ribbon display settings. We can choose to auto hide the ribbon, only show the tabs, which are these up the top of the ribbon, or show tabs and commands, which is currently set to show. Another way you can quickly toggle the ribbon on and off is to double click on a sheet tab. That will set it to hide. When you click on the sheet tab, it auto reveals. You can pin it back down and it will stay there. Or you can click this arrow to hide it again. Lastly, we have the minimize, full screen and close window buttons. Now if we maximize the ribbon again, you'll notice that the tabs group the commands into like tasks and then within those tabs we've got our icons further grouped so we have get and transform data queries and connections data types and so on you'll notice that some of the groups also have these launch buttons if you click on one of those you'll open another dialog box where you have further commands some tabs only reveal themselves when you have an object in the worksheet selected for example if i select the chart here Notice that I now have a chart design tab and a chart format tab. And if I click on the table, I now have a table design tab. These are contextual tabs. Pivot tables and objects like shapes and images also have contextual tabs. Now below the ribbon, we have the formula bar. This is one place we can enter and edit formulas. And we'll look at that in another lesson. To the left, we have the name box. At the moment, it's displaying the cell that I have selected which is B4. I can make the name box smaller or bigger by left clicking and dragging the ellipsis just to the right of the name box. Next, we have the worksheet. Now each cell has a name that consists of a letter and row number as we just saw in the name box. If I select this cell E4, you see it displayed in the name box. There are 16,384 columns and 1,048,576 rows that is over 17 billion cells in one sheet and each workbook can contain multiple sheets. You can see at the bottom, this sheet is called 1.01 introduction. That's the name of this lesson. And we can add more sheets by clicking the plus button here and Excel adds more sheets and we can rename them. And we'll look at that in another lesson as well. When the number of sheets doesn't fit into the bottom of the screen, we get these navigation buttons that we can click and we can scroll through the sheets one at a time. You can see I'm not selecting sheets, I'm just moving them along so I can see them. I can also hold down control to jump to the end of the sheets and the beginning of the sheets. Or as the tooltips show me here, I can right click 
to see a list of all sheets, I can select the sheet and click OK to take me there. The worksheet has a vertical and horizontal scroll bar and that enables us to navigate to cells that are outside the view of the current page. At the bottom of the window is the status bar. Here we've got the macro record button and we can click on this accessibility to investigate whether the workbook complies with accessibility best practices. Over on the right, we can toggle through the different worksheet views and alter the zoom level, clicking on the buttons or we can double click and choose from this list or set a custom size. Now, if I select multiple cells containing some numbers, you'll notice down in the status bar, I get some quick calculations. By default, you'll see average, count, min and sum. You can right click on the status bar and choose to add maximum or a numerical count. And there's some other information I can choose to turn on or off in the status bar. Not all of this will be visible at all times. As you can tell, there's not that much information on the status bar. This is information that may pop up at different times, depending on what you're doing in the workbook. Okay, now that you're familiar with the interface, let's move on and we'll start entering data and writing some formulas.